Today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Aura. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever Googled your name on the internet? I was a little shocked at the amount of personal information that was floating around. Well, that's because a nasty group of people known as data brokers exist, and they legally are allowed to sell your information to scammers, spammers, and all kinds of nefarious people. And that's where Aura comes in because they do all of that for you. They navigate through all of the challenging, confusing minefields that are opt-out requests and data brokers. And ladies and gentlemen, beyond just doing all of that, they do a lot more when it comes to things like antiviruses, VPN services, password management, parental controls, even things like identity theft insurance, and all of that done through one simple app, not several multiple apps out there. And again, all of this is at one easily affordable price as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have one or two of these tools, but Aura gives you all of these at a convenient price. So that allows you to focus on the things you care about versus worrying about things you probably shouldn't. Now I value my privacy and I hope you value yours too. So head on over to aura.com SOG to start your two week free trial, also linking in the description below. That said, let's get on with today's video. Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today's gonna be a little wild technical video over here because, you know, ad block is one of those things that YouTubers probably will say, don't do it guys, whitelist me. Now me personally, I don't care, I just enjoy that you watch my videos, if I make a buck out of them, whatever, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Because of the adpocalypse, I moved most of my income streams outside of YouTube, and I diversified, because if anybody is a YouTuber, you'll probably, <laughs> you probably understand if you do this full time, that, uh, the YouTube ad system or relying on ad revenue on any website is a bit of a fickle uh, thing. It can be stressful. But to understand, all right, ladies and gentlemen, ad block is one of those things that, again, for YouTubers, and I'm just gonna state for the record here, I do not endorse on YouTube, mostly because it's actually against YouTube's terms of service. And I did talk about this a while back. That said, on the other hand, I do believe Adblock is a necessary good for the general internet, right? Especially when you're browsing any random website or dealing with shady advertisements that exist all over. Now, me personally, I understand why Adblock exists. I understand why ad blocking solutions exist because the internet is far, far more malicious when it comes to advertisements in the last few years, okay? So I've covered things like malvertising where I've shown you on actual like big search engines that just entering in popular software like OBS Studio and then being accidentally like thrown down into a hole where you click on an advertisement, right? That pretends to be OBS as an official product. You go to a phishing page, you download OBS. Next thing you know, your actual YouTube channels and your accounts are hacked. Same thing with things like tracking networks, right? Obviously, when you browse the internet, you may, you may put on incognito mode and think you're safe. You're really not. Or you might download the most privacy-focused browser, and you completely forget that the internet has trackers all over on every website, cross-site tracking you. If you go to something, if you go to website A, and then you go to website B, surprisingly, Google, Facebook, and a lot of the big tech companies already know where you're going because most browsers, unfortunately, leave a pretty unique fingerprint. And so trackers exist to identify which specific browser fingerprint goes to which specific websites. And of course, the internet is creepy in general when it comes to it. Now, Adblock exists to protect you from some of these malicious advertisements. And obviously, if you whitelist advertisements and YouTube channels, you'll see ads there. But in general terms for the internet, you'll be, I guess, relatively safe from some seriously malicious ads that are designed to trick you into actually giving up your information or potentially leading you down places that can inject some pretty nasty things into your system or expose you to bad areas. So instead of just downloading Adblock, what about if we made our own ad block and we made it system network wide? <laughs> now, the reason why network wide is so important is obviously installing ad block or U block or a lot of these extensions on every single device isn't exactly feasible. And especially considering if you have multiple people living in your house, even older people that have no idea about how to even get these things working, you can automate the process for the most part by setting it up at the network level. And you even support devices that probably have internet 
internet browsers, but not the ability to support any crazy extensions that also get the benefit of ad blocking. Even if certain devices have restrictions on how you can place ad block, you can always set it at the network level. So when these devices request the internet, the ad blocker at the network level, the device we're setting up, blocks access immediately before the device would even touch a tracker or a shady malvertising link in the first place. But today I decided to go out and buy myself a Raspberry Pi, mostly because I never had one before. I'm gonna turn it into a uh, retro gaming console just for my living room television. But for this video, I'm gonna turn it into something known as a pie hole, okay? Now a pie hole is a specific device that connects to your network and all of your traffic routes through it. And what this device does, it filters out all of the tracking URLs, the ads. So every device on your network gets the benefit of ad blocking without actually installing ad blockers. So how do we get this going? Well, ladies and gentlemen, get your Raspberry Pi. And this is where I got a device shipped to me. It came with a case. It came with an SD card with the operating system already installed. So I put this thing together and lo and behold, I completely forgot that micro HDMI is a thing. So I sat in my car, drove to the nearest store, picked up a cable and actually started the setup process. Now, if you don't buy the SD card from Raspberry Pi, you can buy individual components. You can buy a 32 gigabyte card, download a Raspberry Pi SD imaging tool and just install the operating system and enable things like SSH, which is very important. So I connected this thing over to a monitor, connected a keyboard and mouse, went through the setup process, went to the actual uh, system settings, the Raspberry Pi settings, enabled SSH, which allows us to connect to this device through any computer's terminal anytime down the road. Now, of course, to understand, okay, even beyond all of it, I made sure to give the Raspberry Pi its own IP address. Now to understand, because we're installing the ad blocking system, you need to make sure the Raspberry Pi has a static IP address. Now this step depends on which router that you have. Some of the options are a little different depending on which brand you're using. Now I have an Asus router over here, the GTAX 1100. And generally the idea is the same. You wanna to go to the LAN settings on your router. You wanna find out where the DHCP server is and you want to go all the way down and assign a manual IP address. So generally you should be able to open a drop down menu and find a Raspberry Pi, right? So by clicking on this, you can give it a static IP address. So in this situation, I gave it 192.168.50.68. Now, no matter what I do, every time I connect this device to this router, it will always give it this specific IP address versus randomly assigning one that can ruin this entire ad blocking, uh, ad filtering system that we have. Now at this moment in time, we're gonna connect into our actual Raspberry Pi and install the Pi Hole software. So using any terminal, and you don't need, need to use like Linux for this. If you're on Microsoft, you can use the Windows terminal, PowerShell, whatever. Macs, you can use a terminal. Linux, you can use a terminal. So the way that this works is most terminals will have something known as SSH, which allows you to tunnel in to any of these devices. Now to understand, I want you to connect your Raspberry Pi with an ethernet cord. Don't be using any Wi-Fi bullshit. That's gonna make sure all of the speeds related to this process are bad. Ethernet over everything. Connect it, dedicated, all right? It literally takes an extra five seconds of effort, okay? And a cable, that's it. So anyways, in this situation, you wanna type in SSH and my Raspberry Pi's login is Anas, last name. And then you wanna do add for, you know, what IP you're going with. And because our IP is 192.168, Point fifty point sixty eight. As soon as we hit enter, it'll ask you for a password. So whatever password you use to set up your Raspberry Pi, enter that in and boys, we are connected. It says I am connected to my Raspberry Pi. So at this moment in time, it's a matter of installing Piehole. So if you go to piehole.net, which is their website, they'll actually give you an installation. So click this install button and it'll guide you through, again, the one step automated install. So all you have to do is highlight all of this, copy that and put it into your actual terminal. Once you hit enter, it'll go through, run a few checks and then it will start installing that installer. And then you can start proceeding with the actual situation. So again, it'll take a couple of minutes depending on how updated your system is. 
but you're going to just be fine, okay? It'll go through all of these necessary steps and you're just gonna wait until it actually gives you the setup guide. So once you get over here, you'll see this blue screen. This installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Oh boy. All right, let's get this started, all right? So first things first, you hit okay. It'll ask you, hey man, this is a free project. So if you got some money, donate it, all right? Feel free. You know, you don't, you don't have to worry. Do it if you want at your own risk. So again, static IP needed. The Pi hole is a server, so it needs a static IP. We already gave it a static IP, bucko. So all we have to do is basically hit continue. So here it'll ask you which, uh, you know, interface do you want? Because we're using the ethernet, we're not using wireless LAN, make sure it's set to eth zero. So hit enter and it's gonna ask you, what is my upstream DNS provider? Now you can go with quad nine, you can go with Google, you can go with whatever, but just to make it easier for us right now, we're gonna pick Cloudflare, okay? That's a pretty default option right there. And of course, it's gonna rely on third-party lists in order to block advertisements. So again, just hit yes and continue going. And then it's gonna ask you, do you want the admin web interface if you wanna configure? Obviously we need yes. A web server is required. Do you wanna install the actual modules? Hit yes. Now again, it's gonna ask you if you wanna enable query logging. So this is like if you're somebody that really wants to make sure you have no logs enabled, hit no. But just for, again, you know, general sanity's sake, we're gonna hit yes to this. So it's gonna say select a privacy mode for FTL. So you got show everything, high domains, high domains and clients, and anonymous mode. So again, just for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna go with show everything. So at this moment in time, it's gonna go through an extra few set of steps and install the pie hole stuff. And it's basically going through the hardest job for you. And what comes next will be a little easier to manage. I promise you, you do not have to use this scary looking terminal for too long, okay? So over here, it's gonna ask you, configure your devices to use the pie hole as their DNS server. So again, this is going to be your IP for your Raspberry Pi that we dynamically set, 192.168.50.68. And of course, you wanna make sure that the DNS server for devices that you're using are connected to the pile. So there is, again, there is a bit of you know user maintenance required, but we'll get to it. So it's gonna give you a password here, underscore NXV1 underscore U. So what you wanna do is you wanna open up a text editor, grab a piece of paper, write this down somewhere, okay? This is gonna be your actual password. And obviously you can change this, but for now that's what's generated. So write that down and keep it somewhere. So this moment in time, 192.168.50.68 slash admin. And as you enter it, you'll see this cool web page interface right here. So that password we literally just copied and saved, put that in there and log in. And this is what your actual interface looks like. So again, a lot simpler than the uh, terminal that we were looking at. So again, first things first, let's change some passwords around on the web interface. Now, before you get rid of that terminal and close it out, if you wanna change the password, go to sudo pihole, type it in the terminal, dash A, dash P, all right? So again, hit enter, it's gonna tell you enter a new password. So enter whatever password you want, confirm it, just add the extra safety. And once that password is set, you can finally close that terminal. So now if you go to the admin panel over here, you can just basically log out and just confirm it for yourself. So enter in the password, you're now connected into your Pi Hole. So right now Pi Hole isn't actually, it's not running. We're not using it at the moment. So first things first, you wanna actually look at a few settings over here. So here's your logs, your query logs, long-term data. So if you wanna look at things like graphics, for instance, you can. You've got your groups, you've got devices, you've got domains. And of course, you've got ad lists. So right now there's one, but if you want to add more lists, like block lists, ad lists, you absolutely can. If you wanna add specific URLs, you specifically can go for that, okay? So first things first, you wanna add some extra ad lists to make sure that this is more efficient than what you have as a default. So right here is a website, and this is one of many, firebog.net, which is the big block list collection. So of course they say the internet is full of unsavory content, advertisers wanting to sell you stuff you don't need, trackers extracting and selling your data as if it was oil. So what this is, is an easy list where you can just add links to effectively you know, protect your system and add more efficient block lists. So for instance, suspicious lists, you've got advertising lists, you've got tracking, malicious, so on and so forth. So in order to add one of these, we're gonna go over here and click any of these links. So these are just text files. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of these, we're gonna hit copy, 
and inside the address list we're going to hit paste and we're going to add that in. So of course it successfully adds an add list over here and all you basically can see is when you open some of these lists up you can see that it's blocking a whole chunk of actual advertisements right over here. So once that's done you want to go to your ad list and where it says update your gravity list click this little link hit update and it's going to just basically download those lists and integrate them into your system. So now when you go to dashboard you'll start to notice the number on the domains blocked is just piling on. Now, if for any reason you want to disable tracking briefly, there are options to the left-hand side to disable by 10 seconds, 30 seconds, five minutes, or indefinitely. So just remember this is where it's at. Now let's actually connect a device to the Pi Hole. So now that Pi Hole is up and running, let's actually connect our devices and get things going. Now, if you're using something like Windows 11, go to your network and internet settings, go to change adapter properties and start editing your IP settings. Now inside your IP settings, you're gonna find a preferred DNS and over here, you're going to manually configure those DNS settings. So our preferred DNS is the Pi Hole IP 192.168.50.68, and then the alternate's gonna be anything of your choosing. I picked Quad 9, which is 9.9.9.9, but you can go with whatever you want. Now, where you put your, uh, what, what you put for your DNS is the IP address of your actual Pi Hole, so 192.168.50.68 in our example. Now, if you're like, well, Mudo, fuck me, do I have to do this for every goddamn device? No, that would be a serious hemorrhoid in your ass, okay? That wouldn't be fun now, would it? So what you can do is you can go into the DHCP settings of your router and each of these are individual. So you might wanna just Google specifically how to do it. So again, going back to the router, if you remember where we entered the static IP, usually in the DHCP server settings here. Now, what's more important is again, where it asks you DNS and win server settings. So by putting the actual DNS servers here, this is what's going to be passed on to the actual devices as they connect. So you don't need to be modifying DNS DNS servers for every device that you have. So over here in your DNS server, you want to put 192.168.50.68 or whatever the IP of your Pi Hole is. And in the DNS server too, you want to put whatever you want an alternate backend to be. So I did quad nine, which is 9.9.9.9. .9 .9 .9. I believe Google is 1.1.1.1. So if you want to go with Google's, you can. I pick quad nine. There's no reason specific. I just did it out of preference. So again, look up whatever DNS you're comfortable with and go there. Or alternatively, if you want to set up your own DNS, and maybe I'll make a video for that later because I think it's important, then, um, feel free to put anything like that in. But generally, I think quad nine is probably the best option to go for, okay? And once you're done with this, all you do is apply, and now it should basically auto default this to any device you connect. So now you should start to see this reflected under your Pi Hole. Now, if you look at the clients here, the 31 active clients, you can start to see that it's actually picking every device. And as long as you see this check under uses Pi Hole, that means whatever device it detects is actually feeding itself through the Pi Hole system and the trackers are being killed as these devices hit. So again, the big benefit of this is if you want to stop tracking and somebody's on your network or, you know, somebody just connects in, this whole thing gives blanket coverage, which ultimately is, again, better than nothing. So this is exactly what you want and this is a healthy looking situation. If you don't see green across the board, that means at some point a device is connecting that doesn't benefit from this entire setup that you have. Now, at this moment in time, you're effectively done setting up your Pi Hole server. So it's not really that complicated. It's actually a really fun process. But then again, my definition of fun is a little bit different than yours, I would assume. But to be honest, you might be wondering, Muda, why not just use a browser or an ad blocking extension? Again, the idea of doing this is that you have more control over your ad blocking solution and your entire network is safer from not just ad blocks, but also trackers and various other solutions. Look, instead of relying on a million different browsers, and like a whole bunch of different extensions. You set this up once. And again, it's not a set up and forget it for the most part. There is some maintenance, like you might wanna add an extra list here or there. But once you get this basically up front and going, any device that connects in automatically gets fed through this system. And once that occurs, that means that your device is instantly blocking. Now I wanna stress that this solution isn't entirely something that can stand just on its own. It's meant to be used as a conjunction, right? So again, 
the goal here is not necessarily to, you know, stop those ads. Look, if you're trying to stop like YouTube advertisements or video advertisements or Spotify ads, well, a lot of those advertisements now run off of the same servers and domains that videos and music play off of. So by actually using this in an aggressive fashion, you can actually ruin your video watching experience on the internet. So if you want to stop ads, you know, you might want to go for YouTube premium is a good option, or you might want to go for like Spotify's premium option. It really is up to you depending on how much you invest into those services. Remember, these services are free because of advertisements out there. This entire setup is entirely more gated towards the idea of stopping cross-site tracking or tracking in general, which I find to be very weird and just degenerate in general. And a lot of private information gets leaked out and a lot of profiles get built without the user really knowing. So having something like a pie hole, whether it be running on a Raspberry Pi, whether it be running on a computer, whether it be running on a NAS, it's something you definitely want to have in your arsenal to protect yourself on the internet against shady tracking and especially against shady malvertising, which this is more what this device is geared to attack. And you want, you want, you want to use it in conjunction with maybe a real ad blocking solution out there. Remember, at the end of the day, the FBI and a lot of agencies would prefer you use these kind of tools to protect yourself against fraud. So with that said, yeah, this is a pretty awesome option. And honestly, I recommend you go through it 100%. So yeah, the world of internet advertisements are dangerous. And sometimes you need a condom to protect you when you're connecting to the internet. So this is effectively how to set up a digital condom. That said, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's videos, let me know in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it if you dislike it. I am out.